Okay. Um, what is your current job title, position, and how long have you been in this <clears throat> role? Uh, currently, I'm just a full professor that's been tenured, and I teach criminal justice courses. Um, been with the school now for 18 years, but for 10 of those years, I was the actual running program. I was the program director. So that's a bit. How did you land this position? <sighs> wow. Um, hard work, honesty, education, experience. Um, I had taught at four-year schools, universities, and at two-year community colleges. And when you're looking for someone to build a new program, you have to realize that you have to understand a four-year university side and a two-year side and see how they meet. So I was very fortunate that I was looking to come back to the South. I was teaching at the University of Nebraska at the time, and it just so happened that I had friends in Orlando, and I knew Orlando, my family is from Georgia. So I applied for a position, and uh, they were looking for somebody to turn the whole program around. and. It just happened to be the right place at the right time with the right experience, and uh, they offered me a very nice position. I've lived it ever since. Okay. I think the key to that is be prepared for the day that opportunity knocks. If you've been there and done it, and you've got a lot of experience under your belt from vast amounts, then whenever there's an opportunity, you could say, I think I could do that. If you don't have that experience and travel, then they'll say, well, well it's too late now. Yeah, we need, to, we need somebody now, not next year. So go for it, get yourself diversified, and then just hope that things work out. And they usually do. What did you enjoy most about your job? Having you guys succeed. Not about you guys, I mean the students. Over the years, it's just wonderful to see. I get emails, I get Christmas cards where students have said, I'm now an FBI agent. I am now a deputy sheriff, I am this, I am that. Um, they tell me about the children they have, they're, they're married. Um, the reward is to see you succeed in what you want to do. Um, because people took that into my wing too. In other words, there were people who helped me become whatever I wanted to be. And with hard work and the right people guidance and mentoring, it can come true. Do you work in a team or independent environment? Good question. Um, I said all of the above. The team is us as students, you and faculty. It's a team here. Um, I can't do it without you, and you can't do it without me. So when I come in, I see it as a, a team effort to do. And that's other students helping you, whether it's in group projects or whether that is how can we help you. Then as a university, there are the other criminal justice professors. They're part of the team, too, because you can't take all courses with me. So it's a, a we providing with all of our faculty what you need and what you want. So that's part of a team. And then we couldn't do it without all the, the staff, without deans, without office assistants, without somebody to clean and, and, and keep this place so beautiful. It's a team effort there. And then, of course, all the campuses and then the big school itself, it's a team effort from Sandy Schubert, the president, all the way down to custodial. We're all, we see ourselves as a family. And more so on East Campus, there are six campuses and each campus is sort of independent from the others. East campus, I never thought I'd be here 18 years, but it's just been fun. So it's more of a family. I enjoy all the people around me, so that has helped and I enjoy the students. Okay. Um, how does the style impact your work? Meaning working with others can be challenging, supported, helpful, frustrating, and working independently can be lonely and powerful and difficult. Before I answer that one, which I'll need to have repeat because that was a long question. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, independent from the team is what I do in this office or at home when I grade exams. So I'm creating my own. What can I present? We're always doing research as professors to mm -hmm. find out how can we do something different. We stay on top of whatever the current situations are by going to conferences. And we try to bring those back to the students. So there's an independent part that says we need to go out and learn ourselves so that we can share with you. Now, the next question, which is really a long one, there's multiple choices. <laughs> yeah. is what? How does this style impact your work, like working in a team or independent environment? Do you feel like team-wise it's challenging, but it's supportive and helpful, or working independently, do you think it's lonely and powerful or difficult? How about all the above? <laughs> 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 when in doubt, choose all the above. Um, independent part is that I can choose the textbook and teach the way I want to teach. We have a lot of academic freedom. 
Deborah Jacobs could teach the way she wants to teach. And she uses her textbook. Susan Young and all of our other faculty, there's some individual discretion. So when you take all the courses from all the professors, we're all a little different. And some you may really admire and go, wow, I like their teaching style. And others seem to be difficult, but you still made it through. And the reason for that is in real world, you're going to have different bosses and different clients. And if you can get through, no matter what the boss was, no matter what the professor was, you got B's and A's, then you'll, you'll accomplish whatever, whatever client we throw at you. You'll get through it. You might be frustrated, but you'll get through it. Um, the team effort is wonderful. But we're pretty much solitude. I mean, we have a team, but we don't team teach. We just come in, we teach, and then we see each other and we try to work in groups. So we're pretty much working on our own, more so than a team. But we're all part of a goal to accomplish, give you the best educational value we can. And then what you do with it's up to you. But we want to provide you with whatever we think you probably could use. And then we let you decide what it is. You've known that from taking my classes. I give you possibilities. I'll play devil's advocate. I'll look at it from five different angles, and I can't tell you which one is right. I don't even know which one is right sometimes. But then you decide which is best. And that's what life experience is, which you're gaining in college. Okay. What do you like least about your job? There's nothing. I mean, I'll be very truthful with you. I, every, every day as a college professor, I've been teaching now for about 30 years at all sorts of different universities and community colleges. It's just fun. I have not regretted a day going there. I just came down with a horse, you know, a voice that's sort of going. And my wife says, well, why don't you just call in sick? Because I have, like, years of sick time. Oh, no. I, I don't want to be home with you all day. I want to go. I want to have fun. Um, this is just fun. I'm really fortunate that a lot of jobs I did have were difficult. I was a police officer. I was a detective. I was doing child sexual assault. Being in the military, being in a war. There have been difficult tasks. And... Some days you just don't want to face it because sometimes reality is sad that people die or get hurt or do things to other people. Um, this is none of that. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is wonderful people like yourself and other students that are naive. I don't mean that in a bad way. You want to learn. you got a sponge for a brain and you mm -hmm. want to question why. And nobody can always really let you. And here we get to let you put it on the line and ex discover and explore. So... Every day is fun. I'm sorry. I just have fun here. There's nothing. And I think you've seen that in my attitude. Yeah. I have fun. Look at this office. It's fun. <laughs> so I don't regret there is nothing. Um, if I had to find something, it would be frustration that there are some students that are very talented that just aren't applying their talents at this point in their life. That would be frustrating. But we do all that we can, and ultimately... If they choose not to succeed or not to take advantage of what we have offered them, then that is ultimately their decision. And while they may not do well and may leave the college, they can always come back. Sometimes, the very first right out of high school, sometimes you're not ready at this point for college. Sometimes it may be five or ten years before you finally go, wow, I've grown up, I need college now. So that's frustrating, but that doesn't get me mad. It's just a challenge to make it so interesting that people want to come. I can see dropping math. I never liked math. <laughs> and I can see not doing as well. But when you have courses, I think, with wonderful professors that keep it interesting, you want to go to class just to see what Terry's going to do today. And I don't know what I'm going to do till I do it. <laughs> to a large degree. Yes, I have a, a plan, a, a, you know, a framework. But I don't know what tangent I'm going to get off on. And in criminal justice, I don't know what's going to happen on the news today that we need to talk about tomorrow. So it's always interesting. Um, what was your major in college? Psychology and criminology. Um, I had been a police officer for many years. and was still working in law enforcement field when I went to Florida State. And so I got a psychology degree. The gun never saved my life, but your mind does. The way the mind can handle a situation, perceive, whether to be nice, whether to be firm, to understand. Psychology is what I wanted because I wanted to find out why people do what they do. As a police officer, I didn't need to take handcuff 101. I understood procedures, evidence, and procedure law. I understood that. So I wanted a criminology degree, but first I got my psychology degree, then I got my criminology, both undergraduate and graduate. And criminology, as you know, is psychology, sociology, religion, biology, all these interdisciplines all coming together to find out why we do what we do. 
Please describe your career path to this current job. I never thought I'd be here. <laughs> um, there was a, a group, rock group, um, called The Grateful Dead. Jerry Garcia was a lead singer. And they had a song. And the song says, what a long, strange road it's been. And I guess that's where I would have to say, I never planned this. It just developed as life develops. You, I originally just wanted to be a motorcycle mechanic, be in a motorcycle gang, and that was it. And I got tired of people who were short of shallow. And a lot of people in motorcycle gangs, there can be prejudice, not much diversity, and they just, they don't see a big picture. They're great at just riding, having fun, drinking beer, don't get me wrong, it's fun. But somewhere I wanted more. My brain wanted something more intellectual. Um, ended up in the military. Didn't want to, but I was drafted. Um, and so I found out that if you had an education, you didn't die as easy. You were an officer. You were thought of at a different level than somebody who didn't have a college degree. And so I realized the importance of education. So when I got out of the military, I was fortunate to have the GI Bill, which is pays for college for those people who had been in the military. So I went to college. And part of that was I wanted to learn and get away from war. And had been enlisted, you're not treated as a thinker. And I wanted to think. So I was able to discover. The other thing, to be truthful with you, I, I wanted to go to college and party. I wanted to hear, I heard about fraternities and toga parties. And by God, I'd been in war. I don't want to go to war. I want to experience that. So I found I loved education. I had some wonderful professors. They taught me all sorts of things. I went to a community college before I went to Florida State. Um, I just found it wonderful. And then I just found myself working back in law enforcement um, in different aspects, moving up from detectives to doing sexual assault. And I found myself teaching back here. And it just worked out. I never thought if you'd asked me 30 years ago, are you going to be a college professor? No, I'm just going to ride motorcycles and get drunk. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, I've had the opportunity to travel throughout the world. I was a guest professor in Germany or Deutschland. Um, I've taught all it's just, it's, uh, It just happens. Um, so I, I can't tell you how I got here. I, somehow I just did. <laughs> and I mean, it's wonderful that I did. It's all worked out well. Okay. Um, last question. Okay. What is your favorite place to think about their law enforcement, and why do you like it so much? <clears throat> what is my favorite place to think about in regards to, to law enforcement? Yeah, law like their law enforcement, how they, um, how they handle their law. The best way is what I how I approached it, and I have nothing but admiration for officers who sort of follow, and I I follow in the footsteps of a lot of officers too. I was the type that I hope nothing ever happens to anybody. I used to say a, a little silent word to whoever would listen. I hope I have the quietest, boring night out there on the cruiser. I hope nothing happens. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I, I wasn't looking for excitement. War, unfortunately, taught me I don't want excitement anymore. So the idea was you take the approach as law enforcement, that you hope everybody is happy and you have nothing to do to but if something happens, which unfortunately it does, I hope that I can be there and assist people in a negative situation to turn it around to be more positive. And that can include a lot of things. If somebody has just harmed you, I may have to make an arrest to try to make your life and their life, hopefully, through the court system better. I hope that I can just say, ma'am, please slow it down, have a nice day. <laughs> I mean, I hope that nothing happens, but if it did, and so the officers that take that approach, that my job is to help. I'm a public servant. My job is to help you. And if I come away at the end of a day or a shift and I maybe solve somebody's problem, that was wonderful. So the best thing I can say about law enforcement is the people who get into it for the right reasons. But that's no different than medicine or teaching. If you get in it for the right reasons and you help somebody have a better day than what they were doing, then you can say, smile and say, yeah. It's about them. It's not about me. It's that Maslow said with that self-actualization at the very top mm -hmm. of that's what you want to reach. That's what Dr. King, that's what Gandhi, that's what Nelson Mandela, Jesus, Buddha, all the one characters. It wasn't about them. It was about others. And I cannot put myself in the classification of those great people, please. I wish I could, but I can't. But I can admire and respect what they did and try to do it in my own way, at my pace, do the same thing. So that's what the best thing that can happen. Okay. That's it. Thank you for your time.